about what I would tell myself if I was coaching somebody I'd probably kick myself in the face <laughs> I'd be like ah fuck you're right <laughs> get up pussy I'm like I'm sorry I'd say it to both of their faces. <laughs> remember I met him? You met him. Yeah, I did meet him. I met the kid from Walking Dead. I remember, I saw you the picture. Yeah, yeah, I remember. Sometimes, you know what I'm gonna do? Let Carl know. Yeah, I'm gonna let Coral know. First of all, I gotta excuse my stuffy ass nose because I got a cold over the weekend. Um, not the fucking Corona. And if it was, you're fucked, no, I'm just <laughs> um, But because of that, this week we're gonna approach it a little bit lighter than normal just because I feel a little dehydrated. I'm good now, but we're gonna do deadlifts today, actual deadlifts. Two weeks ago, a day after we filmed actually, I had a back spasm during my deadlift. So it's like a quick little uh, And those muscles were probably fatigued. Um, I felt my right hip was a little tight and I kinda went against my gut feeling to skip the deadlifts, but because I traveled that weekend, and again, the stress of real life, I was traveling to coach to Daytona, I chose, I'm like, man, I need to get these deadlifts, and you know, we all fall victim to that uh, slavery of schedule, where we do something because we're gonna do something on the weekend or work related. And yeah, lo and behold, my body didn't feel good, and I, I kind of tweaked my back a little bit, so it was achy. Um, we didn't miss training, we just found a way around it, and, um, started pressing and today will be my first day deadlifting in two weeks because I just got to be careful with it going forward because Florida's is going to be real heavy so today's going to be volume again not so much a setback but as a I guess an awareness factor that I still need a lot of work to go on certain parts of my body especially my right hip from compensating for my left shape <laughs> piece of advice for somebody that's been banged up getting back into sport quit while you're asking <laughs> get the fuck out of here um i just had this discussion with my buddy danny chin harrow up north and about saying that there's there's no excuse to be in pain while doing your sport um and of course that's a thin line because whenever you want to do something and be great at it there's going to be some sort of stressor pain and stuff like that. We just did a podcast, by the way, at the Battle Axe podcast, should be like an Instagram, boop. Um, but we just did a whole concept on pain and the perception of it. So if you're banged up um, and you wanna get back into sports, my first thing would be like, stop being banged up. Meaning, identify why you're banged up. Why does your knee hurt? Why does your shoulder bad? What's your biomechanics? What's going on in your imbalances? Sit with a coach, a therapist, get that figured out first. And then, start building back into your sport with that concept of being able to train pain-free. Um, there's just no excuse for it. Of course, at a certain age, a lot of us, and I mean us because we're getting older in the sport, we're really swimming against the current, but it doesn't mean we're swimming without a plan. We're really going with the concept of fixing the imbalances because our technique is already set. So I wanna fix that first, 100%. Um, we're fucking filming, get out of here! 
fucking guy. Huh. He's, a, he's this fucking guy? He's a good guy. Uh, but so you want to identify that first. Have a plan. Get out of pain. And then get back into your sport and continue to train pain-free. Because honestly, it's something Brian Kerr would always tell me is ability supersedes or what is it? Availability supersedes uh, uh, ability, meaning you could be as able as you want, but if you're not available to train because you're hurt, you're not going nowhere. So fix that fucking first and then get by fucking back to work. And I'll add that you can certainly fix your problems by training, right? So if you're in fucking pain, no one's telling you to take five months out of the fucking gym, dude. You can fit most likely 100%, you're gonna fix your problems by training properly. So get yourself on a fucking game plan. And don't be a pussy about it. Demo deadlifts, bro. It's awful. It should be to develop the top end of the deadlift, mostly to develop your hip hinge. That's a very strenuous position on the spine. So we, it should be done with a weight that you can optimize the technique. Not so much the intensity, meaning the weight. And it's a fucking kick in the dick when you're sick because I'm a total mouth breather right now. Jeez. I need a CPAP to train, you see me? So what is this? What is this exercise? So doing? this is a Nordic hamstring. So A Nordic what? Nordic hamstring. So it's basically to simulate when somebody holds your ankles, remember, and you used to fall forward. I don't have that luxury today per se. So we're kind of doing a makeshift thing. This was really hard for me because anything eccentric on my hamstrings is hard because A, they're not strong enough. B, I'm heavy um, and I need to develop that range of motion. So it's good, it's not weight bearing, but you'll see me struggle with keeping my back straight in a perfect hip hinge and you'll see me sometimes arch because I'm weak in my hamstrings. So what do I do? I extend into my back. So again, attacking the weaknesses, and I think Rogers does a great, a great job of punching me right in my dick with stuff that I hate to do. And it's why working with him going forward is essential to me because whenever you work with a coach or a teammate, if your teammate is not providing you with eye-opening information, like that's not really a great teammate. It's a good teammate. It's good to have a cheerleader and somebody to fluff your, fluff your fucking dick. But you need guys looking at you and asking questions like, hey, that's a real, that's a real teammate that you can get. So. Ooh. You saw that? 2,000 reps. So we're, uh, the strap bar pull up is a concentric only meaning. So my feet have to touch the, or my knees have to touch the ground. Helping me on the concentric part of it. The eccentric, I'm only going slow because I don't run a room, my, my fucking elbows. But this motherfucker designed this to hurt me somehow. But it's gonna build a lot of overhead stabilization, which is super important in strongmen, especially with these kind of neutral grips. So we're supposed to do 10 sets of five, but we're not. I never said it. Huh? You said it. That was your fucking voice. See, they can't move nothing. So since we saw you last, um, it's been an interesting week. I uh, suffered a small back spasm two weeks ago, which is pretty normal, a little tweak. 
it kind of forced me into a deload last week uh, where I was traveling, doing light reps. I went to coach in Daytona. Over the weekend, I got a cold. So I went into this week, again, kind of bringing my numbers down um, and being very cognizant that training while you're sick is a slippery slope. Um, we had talked about it in this video where we did today, where we were doing our actual deadlift today. We did a, a very normal workout, but mitigated, meaning everything was lighter, the, rep was, the rest was a little bit longer, and we're starting to kind of build momentum into being, again, athletic and able to do what we're going to do. I've been picking up a little bit of tie again, hitting the bags for conditioning, working with Rogers going forward and what we're going to look in the essence of our final goal into the end of the year for Florida Strongest Man is we're starting to put implements back into training. So log, yoke, farmers, sandbags, things that I need to do to get my ass in shape for sports specificity. So going forward now, we're going to really start to pick a day where I do that. Um, and that's, uh, that's typically on Sundays where I train that. So this week I leave to Boston. Um, I'm going to go say hi to uh, a dear friend of mine to remind me why I did this in the first place. And uh, <clears throat> it's always a bleak reminder while we always continue forward and why quitting is not a fucking option. It looks like you lost it.